GT Countdown Top 10 8-Bit Games Let's go back to the 80s, where the arcades were dead and the 8-Bit era exploded. With no internet, tips and tricks were bought with milk money and bartered for copied homework. Multiplayer didn't need an Ethernet adapter, just a couch. And maybe, just maybe, a Game Genie would let you beat Battletoads. With the hindsight of a hawk, Game Trailers has found the following cartridges worthy of the best of the 8-bit era, based on more than killer sprites and commandeering use of a D-pad, but also on their innovation, technical breakthroughs, and historical relevance in the annals of video game history. So be assured, we have separated the best bits from what bites. So strap on the Velcro shoes, put on that members-only jacket, the GT Countdown is going retro. Number 10. River City Ransom. The RCR was a -a one-of-a-kind game in terms of style, and ahead of its time in a lot of ways. Battling gangs to rescue girlfriends was nothing new, but instead of constantly pushing forward, you could freely walk around town, pick your fights, and drop cash into snacks and self-improvement. Beaten down enemies shout cries of defeat like barf and drop jingling change, which you spend at local shops. Buying a pair of shoes, chowing down on burgers at Merv's, and buying CDs all buff up stats to make you more of a badass. Especially after learning some sweet martial art techniques from books. The game is best played with a friend so that you can beat up enemies with your partner. Literally. Number 9. Castlevania 3. Dracula's Curse. Long before gamers had access to railguns, rocket launchers, and sniper rifles, there were only two weapons to live by. A whip and a stash of hearts. With diverging level branches, a haunting soundtrack, and spooky visuals, this excursion into Transylvania was not only one of the most impressive and action-packed, but also one of the most innovative. For the first time in the Castlevania series, protagonist Trevor Belmont was able to switch control between different companions, including Mr. Symphony of the Night himself, Alucard, adding a whole new set of skills and mobility to the experience. As ageless as Dracula himself, Castlevania 3 is still one of the hardest in the series to date. A hearty challenge for all the would-be vampire hunters in the centuries to come. Number 8. Shinobi. This ninja's so stealthy, he's hiding out on another platform. Yes, not all 8-bit games grace the gray box, with our man Joe Musashi the Shinobi rocking out of bounds on the Sega Master System. It's the definitive port of the 80s classic, with all the stages, bosses, and bonus rounds intact. Sure, the ninjutsu magic may have been gimped, but being able to throw shurikens into a guy named Lobster's eyeball is eerily therapeutic. But it's all for a good cause, rescuing the world's children, just like Michael Jackson and Moonwalker, but without all that disturbing context. Number 7. Dragon Warrior 4. Nearly a year after Final Fantasy II captured gamers on the new Super NES, RPG fans found themselves returning to their 8-bit system for this deep and engaging tale. The cast is introduced through four individual adventures, coming together into a cohesive unit Voltron style to save the world in the fifth chapter. Its distinctive battle system comes into play in the latter half of the game, with players only controlling the hero while the rest of the team acts according to one of six strategy profiles. Quirky characters like Taloon the Merchant and Healy the Slime, who dreams of being human, help make this into one of the most memorable games on the NES, as it stands on the shoulders of its 8-bit brothers, sharing the limelight as an epic should. Number 6. Tecmo Super Bowl. Sports games have benefited the most from advances in technology, but there were a few champions of the 8-bit era. Blades of Steel was the best representation of hockey up to that point, and Double Dribble brought the excitement of round ball to consoles in style. But Tecmo Super Bowl is hands down the most realistic sports game of the era. As the first football game to include all the real NFL players and teams, the ability to save your full season stats, and scarily realistic player ratings, it was a taste of things to come. With eight plays to choose from, it was also a game that anyone with an interest in the sport could pick up and be competitive almost immediately. If only the same thing could be said of today's sports games. Number five. 
Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Birthed in the arcades where it became a ring legend, the first home version of Punch Out featured the likeness of boxing bad boy Mike Tyson. Pattern memorization and timing were the hallmarks of great Punch Out arcade players, and the requirements were the same for the home version. Featuring reworked iterations of the arcade pugilists to create a meteor game, making it all the way through the massive string of opponents, only to face off against the near impossible Tyson, is a gaming accomplishment that's still revered to this day. Few 8-bit games had as much personality, and there hasn't been another console boxing game to sell as well since. Number 4. Mega Man 2 Most video game sequels suffer from the inescapable sophomore slump. Not so for the Blue Bomber, who blasts, crashes, and slices his way onto the countdown with his second NES effort. Mega Man 2 may have been a sequel, but it was a title of firsts, with its implementation of a password feature and energy tank reserves, a godsend for gamers, and the start of a series standard. Top that with improved graphics, an increased boss count, and a badass soundtrack, and you've got plenty of reasons to see why it's considered by many to be the best out of the classic Mega Man series. Or at the very least, the scariest. Don't even pretend that you weren't freaked out by that dragon. Number 3 Contra If you wanted pure action on the NES, you couldn't do much better than Contra. Countless gamers can remember the opening jungle level and the awesome spreader, the apex of the 8-bit arms race, saturating the screen with a wide arc of glowing red death marbles. The game is even better with two players, as long as the other player isn't a total jerk. A memorable 3D-ish base attack stage switched up the perspective, and cementing the legend is the famed 30-man code that lives on in the form of numerous gamer t-shirts. Number 2 the Legend of Zelda In a time when most games took place on a single screen or moved straight from left to right, The Legend of Zelda dropped players into a vast open world with only scattered clues on what to do next. When would-be adventurers finally found their way into a dungeon, they were then confronted with mazes full of locked doors, false walls, brutal bosses, and hopefully a Triforce piece. The items found within are often the keys needed to progress farther in the game, whether they're used to cross a river or burn a bush hiding a monstrous dungeon. The Legend of Zelda is a true classic that has spawned an enduring line of sequels and influenced countless other games. And who can forget the triumphant overworld theme? Number 1 Super Mario Bros. 3 it's the pinnacle of plumber platforming, and the crystallization of an era in cartridge form. An era long gone, but not forgotten. It's Mario, and he is 8-bit. Dropping the vegetables are good for you theme of its Acid Trip prequel, Mario the Third revisits its true origins, and expands them to the nth degree. Different worlds bring different wonders, from icy tundras to ginormous Koopas, with secrets so diabolical, only repeated viewings of the wizard could bring clairvoyance. California. Packed to the brim with levels filled with Hammer Brothers and Koopa Kids, the new power-ups were Mario's arsenal, allowing him to take to the sky for the first time, or even turn to stone with the elusive Tanuki suit. But never forget the platformer's ultimate weapon, Kuribo Shoe. The certified sweatshop-free boot appears briefly, allowing Mario to stomp the unstompable. It's just a small touch, but the kind that cinches this Italian stallion another top slot. 